Hello back to the Moshix mainframe channel, this is Moshix and today we're going to be looking, looking at TSO user management. As you know, um, MVS or ZOS for that matter, don't really have a notion of user at the operating system uh, level. Batch jobs are just run as, uh, as uh, jobs uh, coming into the, the system. Um, obviously, um, you can assign, you can work with RecF by giving the um, JCL keywords user and, and password, but that's just for RecF. Um, MVS itself, the kernel doesn't understand the users. Um, there is a notion of users, obviously, at the TSO level or at the Kix or at the IMS or at the uh, database DB2 level, but um, it's it's there that you do all the user administration, but within the operating system itself, on the kernel, there's no user um, uh, knowledge. Um, so how do we define, of course, TSO is a multi-user environment, how do we define users, how do we work with them, how do we change them, etc. Now, the first thing to understand is that within TSO, um, uh, users uh, are defined as uh, in a in a data cell called, you can look at it, there's a data cell set called uh, sys1 UADS um, and this is where the users are defined. Um, how do we insert users there? That's a different matter. There is a command within TSO at the command line level uh, called account uh, where you would then add, let's say, YouTube uh, uh, TSO have to be seven digits, one, two, three, four, yeah. Uh, YouTube and then YouTube. And there's some other parameters here they would have to give. And by doing that, uh, we can add users interactively. Um, however, um, within, let me delete this. within um, our TK4 distribution, we have also a protection layer called RecF. Uh, which is which has some very very basic functionality um, um, from its bigger brother RecF. Um, RecF is a much more uh, function complete product. In fact, it's a very very extensive product, very difficult to manage. Um, but RecF does some of that. It protects data sets and has a notion of users. So before in TK4 we can add users. Before we can use the account um, command in TSO, we would have to go and and define uses in uh, RecF. When I say RecF from now on, I mean RecF with a K, uh, this one. Okay, um, so let's get out of here. Okay, and let's go back into panel mode. Um, let's go here and Is it again? Um, let's open it here. It's insecure. Yeah, here it is. In Sys1 Secure CMTL, um, we have some profiles which we don't need to muck with too much, and then we have users. So uh, first of all is, and that's something that really should be mentioned here in this data set is user IDs in alphabetical order because RecF at startup doesn't know how to sort the list on its own so just make sure that everything here is in alphabetical order um, and let's say we want to add a new user called YouTube therefore Y is at the end let's copy this line and let's call it YouTube um, and TSO users can only be seven digits one two three four five six seven perfect uh, as of uh, uh, ZOS 2.2, I believe, or 2.3, uh, TSO users can now have more than seven digits, but um, certainly in the version that we use here in TK4, it's only seven digits. We want this to be an admin, um, and the password is going to be, uh, let's call it U, um, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, that's going to be the password for it. Um, and so now that we have these user defined here, we save this and, and to add this new user now to make it effective, we have to stop 
rec f we do this on the console by going stop rec f rec f is going to come down and then we start rec f okay um, it should say here something to the extent that uh, updated user table updated yeah so it should be aware now that there's a new user called youtube uh, but that is not it now we need to define it to sys1.uads in the traditional um, in the traditional tso way and to do that we go to uh, there is a job that adds users called jcl lib sys2.jcl lib where all our example jobs are and we use this one add user now there is two add user and add user p um, don't use add user p uh, because uh, that's that that job doesn't really work and uh, by the way um, this every tk4 distribution since i think the um, update 7 we're at update 8 now so i want to say update 7 from 2016 includes also very tiny contribution from true's uh, yours truly uh deal user delete user which deletes a user that's something that i contributed back to uh um, to Jurgen Winkelmann, the, the maintainer of TK4, and he included it. Uh, it's not just as easy um, as add user or delete user. Uh, there's quite a few jobs that run triggered by this job. So this will uh, uh, execute a program called add user, which will then in turn execute three or four other programs. We will see the output as soon as we run this. Um, and then, uh, and, and the same, of course, the same has to be done when you delete a user. Uh, so um, we put, uh, this job looks ready. I uh, make it class H, so we can see this in the output uh, queue of Jeff's two uh, high-level qualifier YouTube. What this does is, is it creates a user and assigns YouTube as the high-level qualifier HLQ here um, for the data sets that it will create for the user. So once you run the job, all the data sets will be also allocated for these users, so the user can just log in and and uh, do her uh, her job. So why don't we execute this and see and see what happens? Um, we run this, and this went through. Um, start 3.8. Let's look at the output. Uh, sorry. And this is all return code zero as it should. And this is also what I meant before. It actually actually executes quite a few other jobs in the background, other programs to allocate uh, the data sets to make sure that the user is not already existing and all kind of um, other other steps um, so uh, this went through the user is allocated um, so now we can um, we can try to create a new session a new session that's one of the reasons why I like uh, the Vista 32 system, Vista terminal emulator so much you could just go here file and just say new session and creates the same session with the same connection parameters. So let's go in here and YouTube. And what was the password again? <laughs> I forget the password. Let's go look it up. Um, this one. We have to go to secure.cntl. Uh, where is it? Okay, you, YouTube. YouTube. Okay. So let's see here, U2B, yeah, and we're logged in. And so now um, we can uh, get out of here, get out of here as well. And if we launch the monitor, the IMON monitor by Greg Price, amazing piece of software. I mean, this is real art here, folks. Uh, we should see. Well, I need to press some enter. Um, so this is so fast it doesn't even. Okay, here it is, YouTube. Okay, so the user here that we have in this window is now showing here properly, and uh, that's how we create a user. And um, if we want to change the password, the the best thing is to go change it again in. Um, and uh, go to three dot four oops, dot secure 
and then go to users, change the password here, let's say YouTube. Um, remember that everything here is to be capital. And once again, this needs to be in alphabetical order, folks. Uh, if it's not, bad things will happen. It will just disregard from the unalphabetically uh, positioned uh, line downwards. It will just not register those. Uh, maybe when I find a couple of hours on the next plane ride, I will change RECF so that it will also sort the list itself. But right now, it needs to be alphabetically. And so remember, every, t every time you make a change to sys1.secure.cntl users you need to uh, stop recf in case it's running it's usually not running and then start recf again profiles updated okay so now you can use the new password here uh, obviously you, uh, this data set is protected only administrators can use this data set so it should be safe um, and then deleting user of course you delete the user from here you restart recf and then we need to launch um, my job here, which is sys.2 jcl lib and run delete user. So we will do this like this, herg01 delete. Um, let's make sure this is upper class, uh, upper case. And then here you put in YouTube and if you execute this job um, then it will delete the user although I will probably first have to log out because all kind of locks will uh, trigger lock errors uh, or NQ errors as they properly called in the MVS what is called lock and in in the Unix world is called NQ DQ uh, ENQ is the system call or the, the supervisor call um, so this is really it. Uh, there's not much more than that. Uh, we can go here and see uh, YouTube. We should have all the standard data sets already allocated, and they are in different volumes. Uh, all this is, looks fine. Um, and um, let's see if this user, since it's a system admin user, it should be able to look at this data set. Oh, access denied. Oh, we didn't make it a system administrator. Yeah, so as you can see, um, the protection here works fine. Uh, this user is not allowed to look at the passwords, obviously. Um, and so this is uh, a good, uh, a good uh, way to look at uh, the protection provided by RACF. Back in the days when I was doing mainframe work on a real mainframe in the early to mid 80s, uh, uh, there was no RACF. And this was a military installation, and it's funny that you know everybody could just access all data sets. And there were some tools in place which reported which which user had access data sets. So if you access the data set you were not allowed to by convention or by orders, you would get into real big trouble. I mean, I mean disciplinary trouble, possible jail. But um, but there was no way of enforcing it from the system. So. Everybody could just access any data set and, uh, and so there was a lot of uh, fear back then, something I didn't like. You were never quite sure what can I access, what can I look at. And so people were like walking around in baby steps, uh, always waiting for the worst to happen. Why did you look at it? And, and some of them, sometimes people will come from the, system, from the system programmers group and say, why did you um, look at this data set? Why did you... Uh, do a 3.4 15 times in a day <laughs> stuff like that I mean real weird stuff um, because the security was enforced through fear and through intimidation and towards the end of my mainframe days they installed REC F uh, there's another product by uh, CA computer associates called top secret if I'm not mistaken which does pretty much the same thing but my installation in the military they were running REC F and um, I remember that uh, one very uh, resourceful colleague of mine had find, found some um, assembler code which would disable RECF. Um, uh, this was with a very, very small assembler program. Um, but it was, this RECF came towards the end of my days when we migrated from MVS 
3.8, the same one, the very same one that we use here, to MVS XA, and that must have been around, I want to say, 84 or so, 85. Um, but before that, everybody could access, in theory, anything, and it was just fear and intimidation that would um, put in a minimum of security. Anyway, back to our system here. This all works. Um, there's uh, really not much more to it than what I just said. This video doesn't have to be unnecessarily long. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them under this video. Um, if you like my videos, please uh, press on the thumbs up button. And please do subscribe to my channel so you can get notifications of future videos. Have fun with MBS and with mainframes and see you soon. Thank you.